In today's session, we'll be talking about contamination control, product and facility point of view. So, next slide. Next, please. So, in the next 30 to 40 minutes, we'll be covering contamination, consequences, regulatory perspectives, overviews, and different examples are, uh, on contamination. Next, please. Contamination and cross-contamination. Contamination is the presence of any foreign unwanted material into the product. Cross-contamination is when there is a material or product with another material or product. But whatever being shown in this slide, other than that, there might be contamination which is not visible which comes as an impurity into the product. So that is also equally very important for us. We'll be discussing this in further slides. Next, please. The consequences. Of course, the, the major consequences is risk to patient health, which needs to be taken care. This is our prime responsibility and the risks to the organization as well, like GMP non-compliances, recalls, sales loss, company reputation is in task. Next. So these are the few uh, regulatory guidance which guide industry on contamination. So like chapter three and five of UGMP, 21 CFR part 211 on building and facility, the 21.176 on penicillin contamination, and of course the ISP uh, volume 7, which gives a, a extensive uh, details about contamination and contamination management and ICHQ9. Next, please. Next slide. So these are the few citations in the recent past related to contamination in industries. In September 2019, there is a citation about equipment and utensils are not been clean and maintained and sanitized properly, leading to contamination. In September 2019, there is citation about processors being found visibly unclean or with foreign material leading to contamination. Then in January 2019, there was a citation which was related to drain and drainage system not having adequate uh, design controls to uh, prevent backflow. And in July 2019, there was a uh, citation related to facility, uh, the paint being peeled off from the building and building is not maintained properly, which may lead to, uh, which was leading to cross contamination. Next slide, please. In March 2018, there was a citation uh, regarding building used in manufacturing and processing and packing is not maintained in good state of repair and it is leading to the contamination. In February 2018, there was an observation regarding the gasket of a WFI water storage tank, which was not being maintained and which was leading to the potential cause of contamination. And in January 2019, uh, there is another citation about the ductwork was not been maintained clean. Next slide, please. So here there are four major uh, possible way of uh, contamination. First one is airborne, second is mechanical transfer, third is retention, and fourth one is mix up. In further slides, we'll be discussing each one of them with few examples as well. So in urban, we'll talk about facility containment design, HVAC pressure regime and filtration. In mechanical transfer, we'll talk about facility design again, related to personal and material movement, governings. And in retention, we'll be talking about cleaning, cleaning methods, automatic method versus manual methods, equipments, design and maintenance. And Last one in mix-up, we'll talk about 
facility design, the material flow, and the procedural control like labeling and SOPs and equipments. Next, please. So we'll talk about the urban transfer of uh, potential cross contamination. So when the powder aerosol moves and deposit on the exposed product surface equipments that lead to urban transfer. So the, there are two major con contributor to this. One is facility design. Second is HVAC systems. So in facility should be contained design and HVAC should have adequate filtration and pressure gradient to be maintained. Next slide. So here we see a picture of a closed transfer system. So if this is a solid world manufacturing facility where we, are, uh, we have a granulator, there is a processor followed by a mill, all interconnected. And uh, finally, from the mill, the material being transferred to a uh, in-process container with a direct transfer system. So if we have such integration or such equipment design or facility design in place, it will contain all generation of powders, dust in the process, which will minimize the potential of cross contamination. So in this system, there is no manual intervention and uh, the, uh, it will lead to minimum dust generation. It, will, it has a tangible benefit of not uh, gen, uh, increasing the yield as well, because the losses of powder will be minimum. Next slide. So there are many other methods by which we can have a facility which will be contained. So in the left hand side, if you'll see the picture, which there is an example of isolator uh, with sifter. So sifting of high potent molecules can be done in a design to have with, with a inside isolator, which will contain everything inside the oscillator during the operation. The second picture talks about a compression machine with containment con containment design where the all material handling from in to out everything is contained design which will uh, make the room absolutely powder free we can in the both the cases the facility can be maintained at the will be four five level as per the design the third one is also a processor with containment design so all this design, the whole process, starting from the charging to sampling and uh, till the end of the process, everything is fully contained and the, uh, the, uh, the facility is absolutely maintained and dust free and powder free or any potential of cross contamination is being eliminated in such systems. Next please. So here we are talking about the facility. So facility plays a very important role in contamination control. So the design of facility starting from the uh, material of construction, the wall, floor, ceiling, uh, everything needs to be taken care of considering the process, what we are going to have in that area. So all uh, equipments, facility design should have support us to clean it properly should have a smooth surface so you can nowadays we can go, go with modular partitions and uh, coat corners and epoxy coatings around uh, all the area around the facility should have good access for the cleaning the clean room fittings should be well designed as uh, the light fixture HEPA housing all the electrical fixtures should be installed in such a way that that whole facility is liquid and the pressure regime also maintain a very important role uh, to prevent cross contamination and contaminations but there are two examples being displayed here one is uh, a example of a bubble uh, airlock another is a cascade airlock where the pressure regime so both the facilities can be designed considering the uh, uh, type of operation we have, type of uh, uh, place we have, type of material handling we have, the regime can be decided, but uh, the pressure differential needs to be maintained to uh, 
uh, have the cross contamination to avoid the cross contamination. Next slide, please. So here uh, we are talking about the HVAC system. The HVAC system plays a very important role to prevent cross contamination in a uh, facility. So appropriate filtration level uh, needs to be maintained. Maintaining adequate pressure differential, as we discussed in the earlier slides, between the clean area and the process areas, uh, the adequate pressure differential continuously needs to be maintained. The HVC system should be designed accordingly to take care of that. The maintaining the temperature RH in the working area. So one is for the product requirement. Second is comfort of the operator who are working in the area needs to be taken care. The number of air changes in the area also maintain a, uh, plays a very vital role to prevent cross contamination because the air gives a very sweeping effect of the room. The air flowing from the top and passing through the return air riser gives a sweeping effect. It carries away the dust particles and that that uh, that gives a effective uh, cleaning of the air inside the room and uh, give the controls. The another piece of equipment which present in the solid oral uh, manufacturing facility is the dust collection system. It, it plays a very, very high potential uh, for cross contamination. The, all the dust collection points should be designed so that there is no uh, backflow or Cross contamination to that duct is possible. The duct pieces should be designed so that it can be open and clean during every changeover. There should be a non return wall and there should be a design where if there is a power failure or any accidental stoppage of the dust collection system, nothing should flow back into the process area. So these are the things which needs to be taken care of during HVAC design so that we we don't end up getting a cross contamination from HVAC systems. Next, please. So next is the drainage. So in the pharmaceutical plant, in the washing area, in other area where we are using water, we need to have a drain on the floor. And these drains uh, needs to be designed adequately so that it doesn't make a uh, potential cause for contamination. So if you see in the left hand side, there is a design of a sanitary floor drain. So it gives a double seal of air seal. So there is nothing can be flow back into the process area. So if these drains are clean properly and always filled with adequate water, so then it will give a air break. No air will flow back into the room. Uh, through these drains. So these are called sanitary drains and it is specially designed and it needs to be always used wherever we have a drain point in the process area. In the next right hand side picture, uh, we're talking about a U trap. It's a, it's a very simple uh, fixture, but which, which causes uh, very, which plays very important role in all installation of our facilities. So it gives a air break between the room or equipment to the drainage. So if you see the water depth seal should be adequately designed so that it is it will take care of the uh, head or differential pressure between the equipment and the atmosphere or any other area where drain is flowing. So while designing the facility, these small things needs to be very well taken care so that will not end up contaminating our facility uh, during routine operations. Next slide, please. So here it is an example of, uh, again, a drainage system, but it is related to a vessel having CIP and SIP system. The post SIP, and the end of the sterilization process. So we have to cool the vessel. And while cooling, we need to ensure, because when we'll cool down the vessel, there is a potential of vacuum being created inside the vessel. 
So we should, you, we must have a uh, PLC control and that should be a uh, air filter air supply which needs to be programmed such a way that before the drain valve opens, the tank is pressurized and there is a minimum level of pressure being maintained inside the tank. So there is no potential of cross flow from the drain to the equipment. And of course, there should be an RV in the place, there is be a barrier filter in the place, but the positive control would be having the PLC logic to ensure that SL is maintained at positive pressure always before the drain wall is being open. Next slide, please. In the next, we'll be talking about the mechanical transfer. So in mechanical transfer, we talk about two contributors. One is gowning and second is facility design. So how the gowning decontamination plays an important role. And second is the personal movement and material movement. Next slide, please. Next slide. So here the process flow. So process flow plays very important role. Uh, the flow should be unidirectional. When we are planning our uh, facility design, we have to ensure the uh, the flow is unidirectional, and that there is a material airlock, there is a personal airlock. So the, there is a separate movement for materials, separate movement for personals. So which segregate the flow, and then. Handling of dirty equipment also plays very important in cross-contamination. Uh, the equipment should be wrapped and covered very well before taking them out for the cleaning. That will avoid spread of contaminants or uh, the potential uh, products uh, spread, spreading around the facilities. And similarly, for high-potent facilities, we can always go for mist showers, which will ensure while coming out of the manufacturing facility, the person is being decontaminated. The gowning and degowning is also uh, a very important uh, practice which needs to be developed considering the product risk and contamination risk. The person which is coming out of the facility should uh, degown him herself or himself uh, the work and accordingly the areas where there is a potential of powder exposure uh, should have a work governing arrangement so that the while movement around the facility the contamination can be minimized so these are the pictures explaining those controls in place and there is a in the top there is a example of airlock personal airlock and material airlock going into the uh, process area so that material and uh, man movement and material movement is segregated for the facility. Next. Next, please. So next one is the retention. So re retention, we'll talk about two things. One is cleaning and second is the equipment. So cleaning, we'll talk about cleaning methods, automatic cleaning, manual cleaning, and cleaning validations. And second in equipment, we'll talk about equipment design and maintenance. Next, please. So here, uh, it's an example of automatic cleaning system for a uh, processor. So if you'll see, the process air coming from the air handling system, getting into the processors, and from there, the exhaust air going through a dry scrubber and going to the environment. So these, if there is a traditional equipment not having automatic cleaning, which can be retrofit and the cleaning arrangement can be done. So there are spray balls, which can be installed in the supply ducts and the return ducts. There is a skid, which can be used to clean the equipment and uh, the the if there is these ducts are being cleaned manually which may takes four to five hours which can be done in a couple of minutes with 
the help of this automatic system and the most important thing in the automated system is it ensure repeatability so if it the thing what is happened in the first time it the same thing happens in the uh, x number of times we doing the uh, cleaning so that, that that gives us a higher level of assurance and we ensure there is no contamination because of any residuals being left while designing this system there are few things which needs to be taken care uh, which i'll specifically like to mention so in the exhaust system there are some safety equipment called quick shut off valves which needs to have uh, needs to be taken care specially while designing and connecting the system so that it is it should be get clean properly similarly if there is a dry scrubber or a dust collection system or a police filter in the exhaust system that also needs to have a bypass because after cleaning if there is a water molecules and water vapors being left inside the machine so if we'll go for the drying cycle those water vapors can go and get cut into the filter and damage the filter so there should be a arrangement bypass arrangement and during drying cycle that bypass arrangement the air should go out through that bypass so that the filters are being safe and similarly in the inlet unit while cleaning the inlet duct there should be flaps which will close during water spraying so that the supply air hepa filter doesn't get damaged these are the few things which needs to be taken care during designing such system but existing machines can be retrofitted to ensure proper cleaning next slide please so here again we are talking about uh, automatic cleaning as i told the automatic cleaning has always added advantages over manual cleanings so the first picture uh, talks about automatic cleaning of in process containers so uh, there is no chance of any manual error or uh, repeatability of cleaning being not ensured similarly the next picture is about automatic cleaning system what we spoke about in the last slide and uh, these last next two pictures are photographs of the before cleaning and after cleaning of ducting network of a uh, processor next please so as we discussed the equipment design and selection plays a very critical role in contamination control so while designing the equipment it needs to be uh, properly designed and selected so that it didn't left any potential of contamination or cross contamination it should be dent free surface it should be as accessible for inspection and maintenance it should be hermetically sealed if there is a hollow section is there and there should not be any place which is difficult to clean similarly in the piping system the piping should not have any dead legs there should be adequate slope and drainability must be leak, leak free and inert gas orbital welding must be done with boroscopy wherever is required similarly equipment surface finish also plays very critical role, role uh, wherever the material grade needs to be selected as per the application we must select the rubbers gasket which whatever is being used in, used in the direct contact part must be fda approved uh, material similarly all support structures and surroundings must be adequately designed so that it, it will not cause for any potential contamination next slide please apart from designing maintenance plays very 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 critical role in maintaining the facility and to avoid cross contamination the periodic gasket replacement is very important so there are many gaskets in the whole system of the machine so there are view glasses there are leads there are filters there are uh, joints where there are gaskets being used 
So replace, replacement of those gaskets periodically, maintain them and making and ensure them uh, intact and uh, proper is very much essential. Similarly, periodic inspection of equipment and preventive maintenance equipment is also important. And all these maintenance needs to be tracked through a electronic system so that the organization ensures the maintenance is uh, done properly. There is no, uh, no, uh, no miss uh, in the plan. It is tracked and maintained properly. And whatever data coming out of the maintenance program, whatever observations coming during maintenance needs to be trained and reviewed periodically so that the appropriate further action can be taken on that equipment to make it better in future. Similarly, life cycle evaluation of the equipment also plays a very important role. So day by day equipment in use get older and those needs evaluation at certain frequency, whether that needs any specific attention or needs retirement. So life cycle evaluation must be done for all older equipment to avoid contamination. Next, please. So while evaluating the retention, the product character also plays a very crucial uh, factor. So the toxicity, potency, sensitivity, and allergic reaction of the product needs to be considered while planning the uh, program. Similarly, criteria or physical criteria of the product the solubility, cleanability, toxicity needs to be considered while designing the uh, evaluation process or cleaning validation process. Next, please. So the last one is mix-up. So mix-up is the contamination of one product with another when uh, the two molecules get mixed, which are not desirable. So there are two factors again the facility design and there are, there are procedural controls so in facility it should be unidirectional flow there should be electronics control in the process and for a procedure there should be adequate labelings there should be sops in place to control uh, these next please So there are, uh, there are many uh, probability of uh, mix-up. One is, you know, uh, wrong API being used, accidentally use of dirty equipment, uh, wrong label being placed on container. So th these are the potential cause which may lead to mix-up. So there are, what are the controls for them? So there are technical controls, that, there are facility or administrative controls, and there are procedural controls. So in engineering, uh, technical engineering controls, the layout plays a very vital role. So the layout should be such a way designed, it, the material flows from start to end in a linear uh, way. So it doesn't come or there is a, no crisscross flow of material. The electronics uh, verification also uh, ensure the facility, uh, the, the controls are being uh, placed at different places so that it doesn't lead to any uh, mix up like barcoding, the, uh, the latest technology like uh, automated guided vehicles, ASRS being used uh, by different industry by industry to control the mix up. The electronic verification in the camera system, in the final packaging, uh, the camera system plays a very important role. It detects if there is any mix up or foreign material in, into the product. Similarly, access controls in the facility at different level ensures the unwanted movement of material as well as personals in different areas that ensures the, and uh, controls the mix up. We spoke about dust collection system, dust collectors. The dust collector design also makes very important role. So whenever there is a accidental power failure or stoppage, of dust collector, there is always a potential of powder material falling down back in the dust collector uh, nuts. 
the design should be swan neck design so that even if it falls back it will not come into the process area or process container it will be get cut inside it uh, automatically so that also needs to be uh, desirable to have in the system next one is the facility of course for high potent molecules needs to have a dedicated facility the uh, inside the facility having multi product facility can have dedicated suits so that manufacturing process contain within that particular area dedicated storage area for the uh, dispense material in process store material clean and dirty equipment ensures there is no mix up similarly there are many procedural controls which can be put must to have in place to ensure there is no mix ups like labelings the uh, that should be a defined main material movement in procedure the product for segregation of equipment the dedicated equipment can be used and room status labeling and physical separations are must to avoid mix ups next please so the in cross contamination penicillin contamination uh, causes a very uh, high level of risk and that needs to be taken care in 21 cfr uh, 211.42 uh, and 46 uh, demands a dedicated facility and dedicated equipment and separate air handling systems and uh, uh, 211.176 uh, talk about having a uh, uh, test for traces so those needs to be in place for penicillin facilities next please next please so we need to have uh, adequate risk management system in place to manage the cross contamination so there should be high risk products the pro pro product profiling uh, review needs to be done the high risk product uh, and high potent products needs to be uh, selected and the uh, risk assessment needs to be done the process flow equipment its back system needs to be reviewed in detail there should be failure mode effect analysis needs to be done these four verticals what we spoke about needs to be considered while doing the risk of profiling and adequate controls needs to be established next please so whenever we are doing any changes it we need to have a uh, risk assessment being done so whenever there is a change or modification in facility or hvac system there is modification in equipment or utility catering to the process areas or changes in limit of pressure differentials changes in procedures or wherever we are bringing new product into the system we need to have a uh, risk assessment and whatever corrective actions we are taking effectiveness check of those corrective actions must uh, must to be done uh, regularly next please so that's all uh, from my side thank you thank you ipa for giving me this opportunity thanks all audience for listening uh, this session thank you